This is part four of the Make Your Own Mobile Game in 60 Minutes video series sponsored by ChromaCoders.org, a game dev club that inspires students to work in teams and make their own cool video games. So when we first, uh, or when we last left off, basically we were talking about creating a little sky in the scene. Um, we were trying to build our little uh, mobile game uh, based on that mini spec where we're going to have bananas fall from the ground and the and or <laughs> fall from the sky and the monkey has to catch them to eat them and if they just fall on the ground we're gonna allow the player to touch the banana to move them out of the way and remove them from the scene so the monkey can still walk you know um, go on the ground and move and try to catch the bananas and to move the monkey the player will use the accelerometer to move left or right okay so let's uh, so we have that sky now let's add the other items and what we're going to do is we're going to add that ground, you know, what we, which we were discussing. And so we just do another new image in ground.x and ground.y. We set those positions. And we give it a name, you know, ground.myName.ground. And the same with the banana. We've got to add a banana, okay, x and y. And uh, cool. So let's do that. And then we're going to call it uh, banana.myName equals banana. And then we're going to do that with monkey. You know, put the monkey towards the ground and give it the name of monkey. And then the left side and right side, remember, um, in our spec, since the, uh, the player can move the monkey left or right, you know, with the accelerometer, we need to have barriers on the left side and right side so it makes sure that the monkey doesn't fall off the platform. And so we're going to add those items here. So we have the left side and, you know, set the X and Y position. And then we give it the name of left side. Okay. And then the right side, there we go. OK, and then don't forget, we have to have a score. This is a game, so we got to make sure, make the player feel like you know they're actually making progress as they catch each banana. So we're going to add a little score in the top right corner. So we do that with the new text, and then you know set the x and y position. Cool, now we've saved this. You can hit File and Save. And then what we do is, uh, once again, we can just quickly hit Control-R, or do File Relaunch, File relaunch and then you actually see now everything there we have the monkey there we have the ground there we have the banana there we have the left side and right barriers and we have the text for the score right up there so you know really cool and what's really awesome that I want to mention that I find really useful when I'm writing code in Corona is that basically if you make a change you can quickly relaunch the code uh, the simulator to test out the code you don't have to wait two to five minutes to to compile the source again and then run it in the emulator so th I think that's really awesome and just one of the reasons why it becomes more much more fun to develop so we've done all that and um, okay cool but you know where we, we need to add this actually you know where's the physics simulator how do we actually get it so that the bananas fall from the sky and then we can actually figure out if the banana collides with the monkey and stuff like that and so to do that we um, <coughs> we're gonna go to step two which is if you go at the top of the main dot Lua go to um, you know physics equals require physics so that turns it on and do physics dot start and we'll just set the gravity to 9.8 um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to those objects now and so since corona kind of has this physics system what we need to do is actually take all the objects we made like the ground or whatever and add that to the physics simulation system so we, we can do that by using physics dot add body right and we just add the ground and we give it a friction or whatever value and then we just say that the body type is static which means that basically it's a ground and it won't be subject to uh, to the laws of gravity it'll just stay there so it won't fall uh, but the banana what we're going to do is we're going to add that too and we're going to say that basically you know it has a certain density friction and bounce and we're not going to we're going to say the default is body type is dynamic which is the default anyways and that means that it'll fall and then we also have the monkey you know and the monkey we're going to add that to the system so we do the physics dot add body for that and we also can do that for the left side and right barriers too and remember those barriers are just pretty much supposed to be there to stop things so it, we're just going to say it's a static object we're using the physics dot add body and then uh, just say the body type is static so now we can save it and then we'll relaunch and let's see what happens so basically what you're seeing now is kind of a physics simulation which is cool the banana is falling from the sky it hits the monkey um, you know, that's a good start so let's let's see what to do next um, so that's where step three 
let's go here and so with step three what we're going to do is we're going to say you know what to make this a game to make it interesting and fun what we're going to have to do is basically make sure that um, <coughs> there's a there's a function called enter frame and what that does is it's a special thing like in Chrome you can add an event so that whenever the mobile game is going to actually render the next frame or whatever it'll call this function that you've specified in this case it'll be on frame and so what we can do is we can process it we can keep a counter or whatever else in that frame and so maybe every 40 frames we can have a random banana fall from the sky so that the monkey can catch it so we're going to add this event listener called enter frame and we're going to do it for on frame which is right up there which is right here and okay so we're going to do is we're going to uncommon out that function and we're going to have something called frame counter which will just keep track of the frame counter so because we want to do it every 40 frames we're going to have another random banana falling out so it says go to 4c but if you go at the top right here at 4c is where we're actually uh, setting up some of these global variables like bananas eaten this will help us keep track of the score so that as the monkey catches the bananas we can increment that and that and then we'll update it and that little score text in the top right corner and then finally the frame counter which will keep track of the number of frames at that point and then the banana count which will tell us how many bananas we want for each game session and in this case we'll just say you know what after 10 bananas the game is done but you can change that to 20 or 30 or whatever else so now let's go to 4d and uh, what we got to do is now we have the frame counter uh, let's put in an if statement that says you know what if if we're kind of like if it's another 40 frames and the banana count and we still have bananas to drop because remember that banana count starts out at 10 um, if we still are have bananas to kind of drop from the sky we're gonna say that banana count uh, you know we're gonna decrement the banana counts so we're gonna say we have one less banana to drop from the sky then we're gonna add the banana to the scene so we're gonna see a local banana display that new image do a random exposition from the sky put the Y you know set it up at the top rotate it randomly and then add the body to the physics um, physics simulation so add the banana to the physics simulation and give it a name of banana so there you go um, and now don't forget though at the end we have to close the if statement for the counter you know for the if statement right here so that if statement see if if we're at 40 frames we're gonna close that and then we also have to close the function itself and so that you know function on frame we have to use an end right there too so make sure you do that because if you don't close those functions it'll throw an error uh, so you do that you hit control save and let's uh, run it let's see what's up okay now we're seeing bananas fall from the sky awesome okay so that's great um, you know that's okay so so now we're getting there and now what we're going to do next is actually we're going to remember how we said that basically if the bananas fall on the ground they get in the way of the monkey so we need to be able to get the player to be able to tap the banana from the ground if it's on the ground to remove it and so that's what we'll do in the next video uh, is go over that and some of the other final touches uh, to actually get the final game done uh, so until then uh, have fun <laughs>